Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my very special guest, Nick Vale. Nick, it's great to have you back again. Yeah. All right. Happy and to be here. This is like, you know, this is episode 191. We're almost 200 episodes, you know, leading the world to a new consciousness. Just basically get, getting the world to understand the true nature of reality and overcoming this delusional belief in free will. Okay. Um, Today's episode is uh, no free will and a proof of God's existence. Here's the thing. A lot of people, quote unquote, believe in God. It's a faith. It's a belief. But you and I, you know, based on partly on this understanding that no one has a free will, are going to actually prove logically, scientifically that God <laughs> exists. How does that sound? Well, let's define God. Okay. Well, first, we start with the, what the show's about. We can go in, you know. Absolutely. All right. So... The show is about refuting free will. So, George, what does the term free will mean? Okay, basically, when people say they have a free will, they say that what they do is up to them. That nothing that's not in their control is, you know, giving them the thoughts, making choices for, for them. You know, and, and, you know, that's not the way things are. Okay. <laughs> All right, my, my definition of free will is that you could have done otherwise. If you believe in free will, you, could have, you believe you could have done otherwise in your past. I turn this off. Keep going. Right, and, and, and explain why you couldn't have done otherwise. Well, first of all, you're always doing the very best you can at the time with the knowledge you had. First of all, you, you don't get to choose how intelligent you are. You don't get to choose your soul. So, you know, and you can't make a decision outside of nature and nurture. And uh, there's only one causal chain from the moment we were born or conceived. Exactly. Let's go. Do you understand that there's only one causal chain? Our world, what we understand of it, started with the Big Bang. That was the entire universe 13.8 billion years ago, this teeny little thing. It expanded, you know, moment by moment. Like the second state of the universe was caused by the first state. Then the third moment of the universe was caused by the second. So if you, you know, if you extend that chain of cause and effect to now, we couldn't have ever done otherwise because there's only one chain of cause and effect. There's only one Big Bang. There's only one way things possibly could have turned out. Okay, so now that we've adequately described and defined free will, why is the show so important and why do people not get it? Before we go into the topic of right, the show. Because you know we're going to do another, like our third episode is going to be why nobody gets it. But, um, All right, well, okay, so right. why is the show so important? It, it's, so, it's so important because like the free will belief is so harmful. People are like blaming each other. They're blaming themselves. They're blaming, you know, and when people blame others and themselves, then they want others to, to suffer. And then we punish ourselves. We feel guilty. It's such a horrible belief. Actually, my answer is emotions do, does trump reason. So you will probably still blame people and get upset. The real benefit to understanding there's no free will is uh, vindicating, you know, and exonerate, feeling that, you know, not blaming yourself. So I've done things recently, and I know who, you know, whatever her name is, has done, you know, I see the venomous blame and hate, but that's faded to hate someone or blame them. The real benefit of no free will is that you can forgive yourself more than other people. That's where I'm at. With All right, that. but you got to understand. It's kind of hard to not yell at someone if they do something real, but you can go home at night and say, well, that was meant to be, and I forgive myself for the way I acted. All right, I agree uh, with you. In today's world now, in the present, you're right. In other words, it's one thing to understand that we don't have a free will. It's another thing to understand it so strongly that we can put it into practice moment to moment. But you so can like, put it into practice with yourself. No, I know. It's easier with ourselves. Because then you just say, I was meant to do that. She wasn't meant to be in my life. I was, you know, whatever. I was meant to have a different girlfriend or wife or a different job. But you can act very emotionally because, you know, emotions trump reason. That's why... That's, well, if you never really deeply blamed anyone, that would be another benefit. But right now, I don't think people are at that point. They can take solace in the fact that once they get this show, you can forgive yourself for your silly and stupid mistakes right. you made. And if you fail at something, you can 
not feel like a failure because after all, it's predetermined. Right, and if we're thinking, let's say, two or three generations from now, let's yeah, say, then you're probably let's right, say, yeah. right, in, in, five, in 10 years, everybody gets this. Then, yeah, 30 years from now, everybody will get it so strongly. It'll be such a peaceful, intelligent world. So not only can you forgive yourself now, and later, when everyone gets it, you won't be really blaming deeply, fundamentally, other people. Yeah. All right, so we did our ob obligatory beginning. Now let's go into the topic. Today's topic is? All right, we're going to prove God's existence. You All know, right, cool. God isn't a matter of faith. It's a matter of just simple logic, just like the, that are not having a free will is a matter of simple logic, science. Okay, basically we're going to start off with the two. You go to a lot of dictionaries, like especially online, they have two basic definitions for God. God is the creator of the universe, and God is the ruler of the universe. Now, how can anybody, you know, deny that the universe has been created and the universe is ruled? Okay, I can't. It's ruled by cause and effect and the hedonic imperative where you're always going towards pleasure and away from pain. And I, you want to tell the audience why the fact that there's no free will can actually prove God's existence? Well, that, I can. Well, that led us, in other words, like... Because uh, everyone right. we talk to, all our compatriots and, you know, guys on our side, many of them, like Sam Harris or other guys in the, the Illusion of Free Will meetup that you run, are all claim to be atheists. You and I are the only ones that are saying, no, 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 everything's God. Exactly. So let's have it out with them. Talk to Mitch and Sam Harris and, you know... So here's Trick. the thing, exactly. So like we have intelligent thoughts, hopefully. We have, we're conscious, right? But because we don't have a free will, it's not really our intelligence. It's not really our consciousness. So who are we gonna ascribe this to? We've gotta ascribe it to whatever created the Big Bang, right? The Big Bang is the beginning of our known universe. So basically like, here's the, the first proof of God is like, whatever created the Big Bang, the Big Bang didn't create itself, Whatever created the Big Bang, we call God. That's so your definition of God is whatever created the Big Bang? That's the first definition, yeah. Okay, Cause, cause fair like, enough. You know, and, and then the question... So comes, what do our atheist friends say to answer that? Well, they will say that... They don't know. No, no, they, will, prove it. they will say that, well, then what created God? And the answer is like, well, God, you know, it transcends logic, it transcends reason, but apparently God existed forever. And that's, that's what the traditional theistic Excellent. belief of God is. Okay. All right. So, like, so that's, that's one down. You know, if, if you understand that this world, this universe, started the Big Bang, it was created, what was it created by? God. Okay? Second proof. Um, God is the ruler of the universe. So, so like, think about it. The, the universe doesn't rule. In other words, like, we don't, we, because we don't have a free will, whatever we do, it's, none of it is up to us, right? It has to be up to something. We have the laws of nature, the, the gravity, um, electromagnetic mm -hmm. force, all this stuff, and that is what determines what happens, what doesn't happen, right? These are physical laws. This is science. This isn't belief, right? Right. All right, now naturally, if God created the Big Bang, God also created these laws of nature. So obviously God through the, the laws of nature that God created, um, governs, rules the, the universe. The way you can figure out there's God is when you realize there's no free will, then you obviously realize that George and I are puppets. We all are. We're all conditioned based on our personal history. So if I'm a puppet entertaining you, a puppet who's entertaining the audience as puppets, and we're conscious, right? We can't attribute that consciousness or that intelligence or everything I'm saying is not mine. Who, whose is it? You know, it's not yours either. Exactly. It's, the, it's that of the higher power that created us. So I don't know how people could say there's no higher power, no God, when our consciousness isn't even our own. The universe clearly contains consciousness because we're conscious. Right. And to say that, like, some, some atheists say, well, like, the universe is a thing and a thing created like the human brain and all this complexity and all that stuff, no. You don't have disorder. You don't have things creating, you know, complex, vastly intelligent things like our brain and stuff. You know, the universe has to be considered a being, not a thing. Right. So the laws of the universe equals God. I mean, that's what it is. The universe is 
giving me these thoughts or whatever, you know, they're not my thoughts because there is no me, right? We're just chemicals and it, we can't attribute anything. You know, it's like I'm, I'm God, you're God, everything's God, everything's the universe. So I think the problem with what people are, the atheists are saying, I don't think they're defining God the way, you know, we don't believe it's a, a, a guy with a gray beard in a chair, you know, determining what's good and evil, who's going to heaven or hell. You're saying God just equals the laws of nature. Exactly. And another thing atheists say is like, you know, they're refuting the God who can make the moon into a, a clump of cheese. We're not saying that. They're, they're, in other words, like, that, the next thing we'll get into is like omnipotence. God is, is supposed to be all-powerful. But like, you have to understand what all-powerful means. All-powerful doesn't mean that God can make one plus one equal three. Mm -hmm. You know, all-powerful doesn't mean that God can overrule his laws of nature. Now, God can do some, like, quote-unquote miracles, like, for example, heal people in ways that we don't understand, but it's not contrary to the laws of nature. You know, the religious community does say, you know, everything is, you know, God has a plan for you, uh, God, it's God's will, but the problem is they think you have to make a free will decision to find God's will for you. So it doesn't make any sense. It's like you make one free will decision and then find God's plan for you. But there was a cause to you making that decision to turn your life over to God, which started with, you know, when you were conceived by your parents having sex and everything. So that decision to turn your life over to find, quote, God's will was also part of a causal chain. It doesn't make any sense. And it's double talk, hypocritical. And, it, you know, it goes back. It's flip flopping. Oh, yeah. So these ministers say, turn your life, make the decision to turn your life over to find God's will for you. That, dis that one decision is supposed to be, quote, unquote, a free will decision, and then your whole life is predetermined? It doesn't make any sense. Right, so let's... Because how did you get to that decision? Exactly, so let's pull back to this... So like... I'm just saying, the word find God's will for you does exist a lot. You no, know, I know. It, even regular people say it was God's will. They contradicted. Well, we're going to yeah, make very right. clear right now... Everything is God's will. Yeah, so in other words, if the God... The universe's will, sorry. Yeah, no, if God is all-powerful, is if God is omnipotent, that means that what God wants to happen has to happen, and what God doesn't want to happen doesn't, can't happen. So that means we don't have a free will. In other words, God's omnipotence is another refutation of free will. Free will is complete nonsense. I mean, like, remember back even in Exodus, like, you know, the Pharaoh, Pharaoh wanted to let the Hebrews go and stuff, right? Then God, quote-unquote, hardened his heart. Mm -hmm. God wouldn't allow the Pharaoh to allow the, the, the Hebrews to leave. So, like, there, there, there's a bunch of instances in the think Bible. Think about it logically. If there's no George Ortega, and I'm making faith, George Ortega is spearheading this revolution, and I'm just following it. So, if George Ortega, right, if there right really there, is dude. no George Ortega, he's just a bunch of chemicals and synapses and, you know, whatever, atoms, and there's no Nick Vale. Now, okay, so who's talking to who? The universe is talking to the universe. Yeah. One well, puppet's talking. Bring out a couple of those puppet things, the, 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 the oh, things. Okay. So, right. we'll explain this. What, what, what Nick is saying now is like that reality is, remember when we were kids and we played with action figures, like this is like Harry and, and Tom. Okay. Harry and Tom. So right. Harry's right. talking to Tom and stuff. You know, Harry says, hey, how you doing? And then, I'm all right. How, how, you know, so how's the wife? Oh, she's, she's all right. <laughs> I heard she wears army boots, right? And then they start going at it and stuff. So this is what happens. Basically, what I'm saying is like, Reality, the, the world, what, what the good stuff that happens, the bad things that happen, it's all God playing with these little action figures like we used to do as kids. We're not doing anything on our own. God is doing everything. We're, we're like the puppets or action figures. The universe is doing everything. The laws of nature are physics. The laws of physics are doing everything. Yes, yes. The laws, well, no, no, here's the, but here's the thing, right? The laws of physics are doing everything, but then we ask ourselves, who created the laws of physics? And that's where it's because like, the laws well, of who physics, implies a person. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. All right, because like, actually, like, because like, I used to consider myself a pantheist. Right. Right. And, and Einstein, Albert Einstein is a pantheist. And Einstein said, fine, he believes that God is the universe, because that's what pantheism me means. The universe and God are synonymous. But he didn't consider God a person. Now, let's, the, let's explore what this concept of personhood is. What, what did, well, how would you define person? A person is someone who looks like you and me and is an individual who has thoughts and feelings. Okay, so like... Not so, an it, not right. an inanimate object. All right, so, but here's the thing. So like, yeah, obviously God is not like a person like us. He doesn't have like feet, arms, and all that no, stuff. No, I never right? ever said that, or who would ever say that? Exactly, but, but, but I think God is kind of like, quote-unquote, 
a person in the sense that like what we're saying, uh, the thoughts are coming into our mind. They're not ours. They belong to God. The God, universe. Well, right. But, but what I'm saying is like, who created the universe? It's like the universe is like God creates the stage, right? The universe. And then God creates the actors and makes like a, us do everything we do. So God's like the playwright. He's like the, the, the stage creator. Do you think the universe is conscious? Yes, absolutely. Well, we know for a fact the universe contains consciousness because we're in the universe and we're conscious. And actually, I think... So, no, go ahead. it's safe to say that the universe created us human beings that are conscious. Therefore, it had to, you know, it's connected to the consciousness that we have. It's like saying, like I said before to you before, you know, a, a, a can of Coke contains the Coca-Cola. So, you say pass, you don't say pass the bottle and pass the plastic or pass the aluminum can with the Coke in it. You just can say pass... The Coke, you know, it's all one. Exactly. It's, or, you know, a glass of water, pass the water, but the glass contains the water. So the water and the glass are together. They're considered one. Exactly. Or like I said to an M&M &M wrapper, you don't say pass the, the plastic wrapper and the m and just pass the, you know, the M&Ms or exactly. Milky Way or Three Musketeer Bar, whatever. And, and so here's the thing. So, so you look. agree the, the outside contains the inside, but they're still considered one. I agree completely. Right. That's my finally described it as well as I could, I think. No, that's good. That's yeah, good. Because one thing contains the other, but it's still considered one entity. And we can relate that, for example, we can say most technically that just as the universe maybe isn't conscious, but contains consciousness. That's what I'm saying. The same thing with people. But they're like, considered one. They're attached. Right. As one entity. Now with people. That's like, how I define it. I hear you. Now here's one thing. Like, let's talk about intelligence. Because like basically, um, we're intelligent, right? But it's not. I like to think so. No, Maybe I know. You, but, not, but you're not. Those, but I but like, <laughs> if, if we're playing with those action figures, we couldn't really say that they're intelligent, right? Because we're making them do whatever they do, right? So anyway, we say we're intelligent colloquially, right? But most technically, it's God that that is intelligent that that's making us do what we do. And one way to explain this is like, for example, like, like the one one way of saying that I'm that we're not intelligent, like. We've got like hands, feet, you know, all these body parts, and they're not intelligent, right? The only part of our, our body that's intelligent are these parts of our brain, you know, these parts of our brain that, that deal with decision making and understanding and stuff. So like, just as like, it's the same thing, just as like, part of us is intelligent, but, but we kind of consider ourselves intelligent as people, part of the universe is conscious and intelligent. But, you know, in the same sense, we can con consider the universe as conscious and intelligent in a way. But that, 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 that just, um, that's another proof of God's existence. Our intelligence isn't our own because we, we don't have a free will. We have to attribute that intelligence to God. And you can also, you cannot choose how intelligent you are. So if you don't get the fact there's no free will, George and I will not deeply blame you because you, after all, did not choose you know, how intelligent you are or were or will become. So, you know, you're off the hook if you don't get this. But I've yet to meet anyone with any real meaningful intelligence who actually believes in free will. The really intelligent people I've met know that free will is a lie and a myth and a crazy, you know, nonsensical, nutty illusion. Yeah, and this, in this sense, what we're saying by intelligence Except is for like, my brother. He seems very intelligent. He still can't no, get there's, it. No, there's people like your brother who are quote-unquote intelligent. He probably has a great memory. But see, the thing is, part of intelligence is objectivity. If you're allowing your ideology, your preconceived notions, your beliefs to interfere with your reasoning and that, that makes you believe you have a free will, well, fine, you may be intelligent, but you're not intelligent enough to override those biases. I think, you know... The bias comes from wanting to believe in free will because it's, it's so depressing for my brother who's highly intelligent to let it in because he's very successful in business and he can't stand it if, if you told him it wasn't up to him. You know, I mean, he doesn't say it like that. But he's protected himself in this armor of free will so he can kind of, you know, pat himself on the back and say, look how successful I am thanks to my free will. Uh, very successful people will have, tri I've said this to you before, you know, at your meetups, you tend to get, quote, I don't want to, you know, you tend to get down and out people who believe that free will is an illusion. The very, very successful politicians like Donald Trump or businessmen or any, you know, self, 
made heart surgeon or whatever, they're going to have trouble understanding this because they want to believe that all the fruits of their labor were them. Right, but then you go beyond Getting all them. the poor people who have failed at everything their whole life, they're, they're going to get this as a, as a great opiate to the masses. Type right, of thing. so like, so most people might, might kind of like accept it because they're not all that successful. Right. Successful people kind of like won't out and accept it. Hedge fund but, guys, but Wall Street But the very guys. top, for example, Darwin, Freud, Einstein, these are like our, our top minds, you know, among our top minds, they get that we don't have a free will. Right, but talk for a second why, and, and a guy like, why a guy like Donald Trump couldn't get it. He's the uh, epitome of not getting it. Right, right. Well, yeah, I, I know. Yeah, but let's, because right, we're, we're, okay. we're going to do a whole episode on that, why people don't get but it. But he's kind of going against God if he thinks he's doing everything. No, I know, yeah. I know. And, and God's making him do that. All right, so <laughs> the, the next proof of God's existence, like when, again, if you define God the way God has been defined in Judeo-Christian, Islamic, uh, you know, text. For, for centuries, for millennia, another definition of God is God is everywhere. God is omnipresent. Well, guess what, folks? The universe is everywhere. So how are you going to say that God doesn't exist? God is the universe. God is everything. God w is what created everything. Also, there are people who say, like, everything is God's will. But then if you ask them in this phraseology, if you say, do you believe in free will? They say, of course. But then they might go on a sermon and, and you know, be a minister or whatever, or even at a Republican national debate or whatever, they'll say God's will. God. But then if you say, do you believe in free will? They say, of course. What is it by the words, what is it by, because of the words, do you believe in free will? That gets, it gets everybody so crazy. You know what I think Those two words. I know. But if you say, is it God's will? They'll say, yes. Do you believe in free will? You know what I'm saying? I know What's what you're up saying. With that? What's up with that is that, again, we're going to go into when this in detail. When you word it, do you believe in free will? Everyone has a panic yes, attack. We're gonna get, in, in a couple of shows, we're going to go into this in detail. But basically, right, if you're five years old and a priest or a rabbi or something, listen, if you don't believe what we tell you, when you die, you're going to suffer for the rest of eternity. All right, so one of the things we're telling you is you have free will. All right, if, if we yeah, grow up... All, you're also telling me God has a plan for me. No, I know. I know. I, it doesn't make sense. And it's well, a contradiction. It's contradicting. Yeah. And they, you know, they, they don't get it. All all right. Um, the next um, definition of God is that God is all-knowing. Now, this is easy, because, like, if God is everywhere, then God has to know everything, because everywhere is everything. If God governs the universe, the rules of nature, you can't govern something without knowing it. So there's nothing that God doesn't know. That's, that's another... So God exists. I mean, like, this is not belief in God. This is like a proof a logical scientific proof that God exists. Well, if God is all knowing, that's an easy refutation to free will because if George was at lunch with me earlier and he was going to, you know, and I'm God and I know everything, and I know that he was deciding between Wendy's and McDonald's, and I know that he was going to choose Wendy's, and you chose McDonald's, I knew you weren't going to, so then you would have to change your mind again and go to uh, Wendy's because I knew, I mean, you, you wouldn't be able. To, to choose McDonald's. Not that this happened. I'm just saying, exactly. how could you choose McDonald's when I, you know, so you're going to think you've changed your mind and go to, but you, it, I made it physically, emotionally, existentially impossible for you to choose McDonald's because I knew you were going to pick Wendy's. Yeah. And now there gonna, no, there's no way you could have, you know. Now we're going to blow their minds. Right? Like we, you got that. Absolutely. Now, now we're going to blow their minds. You want to know are? something like, yes, God in the present, even God in the present moment doesn't have a free will. Why do I say that? Well, if God is omniscient, if God is all-knowing, God knew a billion, two, three, four billion years ago, not only what we would be doing today, God knew what God would be doing today. So if God knew a billion years ago what God would be doing today, God is locked into that, that knowledge. God has no, I mean, God may have had a free will somewhere in the eternal past, who knows, but he's what? locked. In. God Think did about, not have a free will ever. No, no, huh? There's no free will anywhere. No, no, well, I mean, because like, then think of like the very, 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 very beginning, and that transcends logic. Because like, if God is eternal, how could there be a very beginning? So like, yeah. Let's not confuse the audience. There's no free will with God or any. <laughs> there's no free will, you know. Okay, now here's the one thing. So like, now, all right, we're proving God's existence scientifically. It's not a belief. It's a you know, if you reason it out, God exists. But here's what you have to accept. We human beings aren't good all the time. God, you know, God's the, the puppeteer, makes us like action figures. Sometimes we do things that are wrong, that are evil. So we can no longer conclude that God is all good. You know, we have to, and, and this, is, this is part of the Bible in Isaiah. Isaiah 45, 7, God himself says, I create light, I create darkness, I create good, I create evil. 
All right, so God himself is saying in the Bible, so like, I know we have to get accustomed. It'd be nice if God was all good. If, 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 it'd be nice if there was no pain or suffering or evil. But we have to acknowledge the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so, and that's not too bad. Um, so, all right. So, basically, these are the basic attributes of God, okay? God as the creator, well, if, if, the, if the universe exists and had a beginning at the Big Bang, as we know it did 13.8 billion years ago, it was created, and God as the creator makes sense. If God, if the universe is ruled by the laws of nature, then God is what created the, the, the laws of nature and actually what makes the laws of nature work the way they do. So this, this is like, again, this, what, what we're doing, um, and I'm wondering is like, is, is, I mean, our next episode is going to be is like, is proving God's existence even a bigger thing than, than leading the world as we're doing to a new consciousness that the that, that free world doesn't exist? Um, all right, so can we, um, one way in terms of this all goodness thing, because sometimes we, we, we want to like see God as good, and it, we don't want to see God as evil and all, but so here's the thing, we, we can kind of absolve God of, of evil, but then if we do that, we kind of like have to see him as neutral. In other words, like if Nick was, like Nick was saying, like if God is eternal, there, um, we don't get to a beginning. In other words, we can't say, well, at a certain point in time, God decided to do something evil or something because there was like an eternity of time before that. We never get to a point where God makes any kind of decision because eternity doesn't allow us. You know, it's going backwards. So by that reasoning, you know, we can say, well, God really isn't evil because there was never ever a point at which he made an evil decision. But then again, if we use that reasoning, we have to say that God isn't really good also. And we, I guess maybe like we just, we just see God as good because it makes us feel good. You know, that's all right. But let's not forget the point of the show. The point of the show is to explore the illusion of free will. So discussing what started the Big Bang or whatever book of Genesis or whatever beginning of, you know, evolution versus creation or whatever you're talking about is really kind of irrelevant. You just want the world to know there's no such, free, there's no such thing as free will. And the implications of that prove that we're puppets. And since we're puppets, that proves that our consciousness is not our own. It has to be the consciousness of the universe. The universe equals God, so God has the consciousness, you know, God is, is, contains consciousness. I mean, I don't know what, you know, exactly. discussing how the Big Bang started, we're going to lose viewers. Nobody kn knows, nobody really cares, nobody will ever be able to say, I guarantee, I, we, but you and I guarantee there's no free will, and the implications are leading you into these crazy other places, but I'm not really interested in how the universe started, because... You'll never, ever get that, so, you know. Okay, but it's just another thing. I talk about this, it more, No, 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 we've got about 40 yeah, seconds left. So it's another thing. So in other words, our show isn't important just because we're leading the world to new consciousness. Our show is important because one powerful implication of our not having a free will is, as you just explained, if stuff isn't up to us, it has to be up to God. God has to exist because we don't have a free will, because things aren't up to us. Okay, fair enough. All right, so this is great. So now you understand the belief in God is not just a belief, it's an understanding, and it comes from this understanding we're going to have free will. Next episode, we're going we're gonna to wonder, like, is like proving God's existence even more important than proving that free will doesn't exist? I don't know. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>